Hi, good morning everyone and welcome to our third edition of Working From Home with Microsoft Teams. In our previous webinars, we told you how you can effectively work from home uh, using Microsoft Teams uh, during these times. And today we will be talking more specifically about how secure you can be while doing this. As we all know, during this time, a lot of uh, hacker activity and online uh, cyber attacks has gone up. So today we will be focusing on the security aspect of working from home. Presenting today will be Kiran from Microsoft APAC and Udesh from Zilia. Our agenda for the day will cover various different aspects of security while working with Microsoft Teams remotely. Um, also, one other thing we uh, one other thing that we covered previously was how you can get started working on Microsoft Teams. If you haven't already, please visit our website or reach out to one of our account managers that you may already know. Um, we will also be having a Q&A session at the end of this uh, webinar, so make sure to stick around for that if you have any specific question that arises. For now, let me hand it over to Kiran to take you through the rest of today's content. Cool. Thanks, uh, Sujan. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, good morning, good afternoon, uh, wherever you are. I hope everyone is uh, staying safe uh, during this uh, crisis COVID-19 situation. Um, as uh, Sujan mentioned, uh, today we have a, a big agenda of making sure how your employees uh, are able to access your corporate applications from their uh, remote places, no matter where they're working uh, from. Um, they should be able to access their applications more securely, right? So, so you as an IT department or as an IT organization, um, the first steps uh, in building a security foundation for your remote workforce uh, should be to ensure that all your users are able to access their applications, the critical productive applications uh, more uh, securely, right? So the agenda of today is focused more on uh, what will you be knowing today? You will be knowing about how your users can securely access all your applications from anywhere. Uh, how can they discover the applications which have been assigned to them? And how can they actually collaborate with your employee, your uh, you know organizations, vendors, partners, contractors, you know contingent staff, and so on? It's not about just accessing; it's also about having that strong authentication. It's about protecting your remote employees. It's also about making sure who, which user is a real-time risk uh, for your organizations and for your uh, applications, right? So this, these are some scenarios which we will be focusing uh, today uh, in our uh, session. Now, just moving on to the slide. This is where we are all today, right? So we are in this uh, COVID-19 uh, uh, situation uh, and we just announced, uh, uh, I, I'm based out of Singapore. I'm sorry, I forgot to introduce myself. Uh, as, as Sujan mentioned, I'm Kiran. I'm a cloud solution architect based out of uh, Singapore. I'm sure most of you might have uh, seen me. I've come uh, to uh, Colombo many times and then I've presented in uh, zillions of security events as well in the past. Now, in this uh, COVID uh, situation, uh, even in Singapore, our prime minister just announced two weeks back that uh, the lockdown period for Singapore is extended until June 1st. So that means uh, we have no other option than uh, working from home, right? Now, a company like Microsoft, we, we are always being prepared uh, in this situation because if you look at my role, I cover APAC and then I keep traveling uh, most of the times uh, to many countries. And I will be most of the times I'll be working from home, working in uh, airports, working from different cities, hotels, uh, customer place, partner place and so on. So there is always, uh, you know, Microsoft ensured that uh, my I have applications uh, to to make me remain productive. At the same time, those are all protected. Now we are in this exact uh, situation. Now it's becoming a very daunting task uh, for you as an IT uh, team for your organizations to roll out uh, a similar remote work environments, use cases, applications uh, for your employees, right? Now many organizations are needed to transition uh, their remote workforce overnight. They have to transition because now your employees are not able to come to your office and no matter uh, where they are, you have to 
provide access for your applications and data, right? Now, uh, this actually gives a couple of challenges for you as an uh, organization, right? The first one is uh, you have to ensure that your people can be productive uh, working remotely. Uh, and that includes you have to provide them the right tools, right applications, and you need to make sure uh, that either you have to give them a devices or you have to make sure you have to enable their own personal devices in order to access your corporate applications. Right now, we have actually seen um, when you have a lot of remote users coming into the organization, right? Your VPN scalability becomes a big constraint. Now you have seen huge, almost all employees are accessing remote. So there is a sudden spike in the remote access uh, for your applications. Now there are a lot of uh, challenges comes for you to manage uh, the personal devices, to manage the new devices. Now when you provide access, it becomes very difficult for you to enforce even the security control, right? So this is a crisis situation uh, we are in uh, currently. Now, um, there are three important steps, you know, as part of this, you know, we want to give you these uh, 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 steps that uh, which you can secure your remote workplace. Now, the first thing is you need to make sure you enable remote access to all your applications. I'm sure I believe most of you have already done this. Second thing is you have to manage all these devices and applications. And third thing is like you have to protect your corporate resources, your corporate applications. Um, you know, for these uh, you know, users. Now, at Microsoft, we are really committed to your success. We want to make sure you know you secure your remote workforce. Uh, we have been working with a lot of organizations across the globe uh, in this crisis situation, and we've been also talking to our own productive, uh, you know, productivity or engineering or security team within Microsoft to provide the best uh, guidance and recommendations for organizations like yours. Um, we have basically identified three areas where you can make quick progress uh, in ensuring your people are productive when working remotely um, and being more uh, secure. Now the first step uh, is to enable remote access to all your applications. Uh, that includes your on-premises applications, your cloud applications, your business applications, you know, line of line of business applications or web applications and so on. The second step is to manage the devices and applications effectively. And the third step, as I mentioned, it's about protecting the corporate uh, resources, right? Now, let's look at as, as, as far the first step is concerned, right? Uh, we have to make sure uh, that you start with single sign-on using Azure uh, uh, Active Directory, Microsoft Azure Active Directory. The reason being, uh, now you all know that Azure Active Directory is a cloud-based identity and access management solution, and that can actually give you uh, a single place or a single pane of glass for your management, or we can we also call this as a, a control plane. You can actually start, uh, you know, access control by enabling single sign-on onto your applications which are connected to Azure AD for all your users, entire organizations. Now single sign-on ensures that users only need to log in once to gain access uh, to all your critical productive applications and they don't need to remember their passwords. Now this is uh, very, very important because now uh, when you have given uh, so many applications for your employees to work from remotely and every application has their own username and password. It becomes very difficult for users to remember and then log into each application. So that's one of the reasons why you need a single sign on kind of a solution because now uh, it actually gives you one identity, one username and password for you to log in uh, from anywhere and then yet access them uh, securely. Now, a lot of organizations are still thinking that is, is moving on to the cloud is secure, right? Is it is it really helping uh, uh, to protect, right? So cloud is definitely more secure because, you know, cloud is where uh, we have trained models, we have algorithms, and then we have integrated a lot of these solutions seamlessly. And, you know, we have also enforced a lot of the security. Now, if you look at uh, uh, 
with a single sign on, especially with Azure uh, Active Directory, you you know we have integrated more than three thousand uh, applications seamlessly, and you can also integrate your Azure AD into your other applications which are hosted in Amazon, Oracle, or Google Drive, and also you can access the same identity to access your on-premises legacy applications. Now, if you look at uh, pre-integrated applications, now with the uh, Azure Active Directory, we have close to 3,300 applications uh, which have been integrated and you can today use them uh, as a single sign on. So you can use Azure Active Directory username and password to log into all these applications uh, with secure access. Now, what we also have done is now it becomes very difficult for you to uh, provide these applications for the users, right? So uh, if you have used Office 365 portal, so that is one place where all your users can actually go ahead and see all these applications which have been assigned uh, for them. If they don't have it, there is a portal called myapps.microsoft.com. I'll be showing you that in my demo. Using that portal, you can actually access to all your uh, applications. So it goes based on the membership. So based on your users, part of a particular group, those applications would be visible for them. When they go to myapps.microsoft.com, they can actually log in and then they can actually view all these applications uh, which are assigned to them. And then with uh, Azure Active Directory B2B, uh, business to business, you can actually invite your partners, your contingent staff, your, your contractors, your vendors to also log in and then access your applications more securely. And then you have the visibility of who is accessing from where is he accessing on all those stuff. It need not be a, a corporate ID or an enterprise ID. Even if you have a contract employee who is an individual and then he don't have an official mail ID, but he only works on Gmail or Outlook, you can still invite them to access your own application securely. So that's what Azure B2B uh, provides business to business. Now, it's not about just providing the access. It's also about protecting it, right? So um, we believe that you know, when you have a username and password uh, in Azure Identity, uh, right, uh, Azure Active Directory, you have to enable multi-factor authentication because we believe that by enabling uh, multi-factor authentication policy, you can actually prevent 99.9% .9 of your identity attacks because there is always a second layer of protection for you. And with Microsoft, uh, we provide uh, multiple solutions. Uh, we have Microsoft Authenticator app, which you can use as your two-factor authentication. Plus, apart from Microsoft Authenticator, we also have Windows Hello. We support FIDO uh, technology solutions as well. Uh, we use soft tokens, hard tokens. You can also use your phone, a text message on voice calls uh, to verify as your two-factor authentication. And we also use push notification services. Now, with uh, not just uh, MFA, we also have conditional access. Now, if you start going after enabling MFA for all your applications, uh, you know, that becomes a very challenging experience for your employees, right? So we have this innovative solution called conditional access where only my MFA challenge will be asked or, you know, challenged to, a, to your user when there is a risk factor comes into place. So we're going to see that demo uh, from Udesh later on. He will be showing you how this conditional access works and uh, he will also show you what is that risk factor and then how uh, the multi-factor authentication automatically kicks in. OK, now with that being said, let me take you through a couple of demos and I'll show you how easily you can access your My Apps portal. And then there are a few other things which you need to as a, as a home user, uh, which you can start with. Now, what I want to do is I want to uh, start with. I hope you all can see my uh, screen. Now, what, what I want to do is. Uh, as a home user, it's uh, very much possible that you know I, I forget uh, my username and password, right? So I change my password and all of a sudden, like you know, I have no clue that I, I forgot about it, right? Now, um, so let me let me just uh, see. Uh, Udesh, can you confirm if you can see my screen? Uh, we can see the demo part, I think, not the. Uh not the uh, like actual demo that you're doing still in the presentation oh okay let me let me share my screen uh once again one minute
Okay, can you see my screen now? Rudesh, can you confirm? Yes, I can see that uh, web page. Okay, awesome. So thanks for that. Uh, so so with uh, we have this beautiful feature called SSP or self service password reset. So for your remote users, if they have forgotten their password, uh, all they can do is they can go to this particular web page called uh, SSP or self service password reset, aka.ms slash self service password reset. Now, when you go there, you can see that this is a universal web page, passwordreset.microsoft.online. This is something very similar to your Office 365 uh, web page, so universally accessible. So all you need to do is here, you can actually specify uh, your user ID and you can mention that you have forgotten your password and now you're trying to reset by yourself. So you don't need to call your IT help desk. Uh, the, or anyone else uh, in, in the organization for you to reset your password. You can go to this particular link and then from here. You can basically access it now. OK, I think I typed it wrong. Let me retype it. OK, now. You can actually see that now based on my password policy reset policy, it's asking me like how do you want me to reset? I want to verify that it's me and this is the phone I've registered in my password reset or you know uh, in my profile in Active Directory. So what I'm going to do is like I'm going to uh, enter my phone number so that there is a text message OTP message comes into my phone and now uh, it's asking me to uh, enter the verification code I just received on my mobile. So I'm going to enter it. It's uh, 385613. Uh, now this is the code and here you go. I mean, I now uh, in a page where I can enter my new password without even remembering my old password. So with this, you can actually as an organization, you can actually make sure you minimize or cut down your IT help desk cost and you can save thousands of dollars, uh, you know, by just allowing your own employees to reset the password by themselves. OK, uh, this is about. Um, self-service password reset. So once you have moved to Azure AD, you have these uh, features and functionalities available. The second uh, demo I wanted to show you is on myapps.microsoft.com. So if you look at this, uh, this is one place where you can actually log in as a user, as an end user, and then you can actually get all access uh, to uh, your application. So I have my username and password uh, saved here in the portal. Uh, and when I log into this particular portal, uh, it tells me that OK, now I don't have any applications assigned to me, but as an IT, if you have uh, allowed uh, or uh, pre assigned some applications, they are visible here. Otherwise, the user himself, he can actually go to groups and he can join himself uh, to to the groups where he belongs to. So for example, I have this one group called uh, Contos or Bug Bushers, so I join myself. So this is the auto approved group, so when I say I'm a new employee and uh, I need access to my application. So I do a justification request. When I do this automatically because this group is open for all. So the moment I say join this group, it is auto approved. So I don't need an approval mechanism. But then there are some groups which are related to sales, marketing, retail. You can actually uh, go through an approval mechanism. So the user will request and then you have uh, as an IT, you can actually uh, provide access to them. OK, so now once you join this group, like you know, you can actually see in no time you will get some application. So right now what you're seeing here is uh, it needs to refresh, so it takes about two to three minutes for once we come back to this screen uh, after two minutes, you will be able to see all the applications which are uh, given to me while it is coming in. Uh, what I wanted to show you is I wanted to show you the password policy. Uh, which you can enable for your entire uh, users. Now this is my uh, portal.azure.com. This is for the IT uh, admin team. Now when you log in here with your global admin accounts, you can actually go to Azure Active Directory. Uh, so this is how you look. Uh, it looks and when you log in, you have this Azure Active Directory. So you click on it and then you have password reset. Now here, you enable password reset self service password reset is enabled for all and uh, in authentication methods you can say like you know do you want to verify them only once or twice so based on that so you have one or two options and then you can also decide uh, what is the authentication method you want to uh, 
give them either using email, mobile phone, office, or using some security questions, right? So you can uh, choose uh, the number of uh, methods you want to test. Then comes the registration. Yes, you have to make sure all the users who are signing in has to be registered, and once in every six months, uh, it has to be asked to re authenticate or reconfirm their uh, user ID. OK, now you have notification. So once the user reset the password, there is an email in his inbox telling you have resetted your password. In the case of identity compromise, if you really not done the, the uh, password reset, uh, you will get a message or an email in an alert and then you can quickly react to it. And even admins get a notification in their inbox telling so on so user has successfully resetted his passwords. And then you can also put some customization telling in case if they want to reach your IT help desk, you can put a phone number or an email ID. And then if you are using your Active Directory, local Active Directory as your primary authentication, uh, when users use the SSPR, self service password reset browser to reset the password, there is a password write back. So automatically it will write back to your local Active Directory uh, as well. So you don't need to worry about you manually writing them uh, on the uh, Active Directory. Now we quickly come back to this. Uh, it's still taking a couple of more minutes. Uh, let me do one thing. Let me come back to the PPT. Once I'm back to my session again, I'll show you like there are a lot of applications visible here and with just clicking on it, there is a single sign on uh, happens automatically to my uh, applications. Now with that, uh, let me give back to uh, Udesh. Uh, to do the conditional access and CASB session uh, for you. Uh, Udesh, it's over to you. Uh, thanks, Kiran. So let me share my screen. Yes, I uh, hope uh, everyone, can, uh, everyone can see my screen. Uh, so with that, uh, we'll move to the conditional access. So actually, uh, I think with the previous uh, session that Kuyan did, we it can it make our life more easier because the thing is uh, there are a lot of applications that we have to give permission when the users change in their division, so uh, uh, their departments. So it makes our life more easier to assign the new permission. And when we do that, actually, conditional access is one of the challenging thing we have to do because when we enable the conditional access for the users, uh, actually uh, we have to make sure. It is convenient to everyone because the reason is uh, we don't have to give the multi-factor authentication for all the people for all the time. If we do that, it will be a hectic uh, process. But if you enable without multi-factor, that is actually uh, going to a kind of a extreme easier situation. But again, still it's not a good practice. So what we are going to do is we are going to balance this. So how we can balance this is we are going to do, we are going with the zero trust model. Uh, so where people can actually uh, share their information they are, they can log in, but it will be kind of based on the risk. So how we do this is actually we use conditional access uh, with the conditional access based on a lot of criteria. We can make sure people can access their data without any risk. So how we do actually we create policies uh, based on the users. So when you say users, we can create policies for the uh, role basis or partner basis and based on the device also we can do the policies so that might be based on the trusted device or based on the operating system and the same time not only that we can make sure we are given policies based on the location as well so it might be based on their uh, IP address or it might be based on the country so not only that we can do the application permission as well uh, for an example, when the users have going to access their email, we, have to, we can enforce client must use Outlook, not any other application, not the native application in the mobile. Likewise, so when we give these conditions, actually we can look at the session risk. So how we do the session risk? Uh, actually, Microsoft is doing proactive AI uh, enhancement protection. And Microsoft is having a lot of automatic real time remediation process and they do a lot of machine learning as well. So all this knowledge, they put it into a single database, which is more than 40 TB. And again with the uh, machine learning process itself. So when the user is trying to access their SharePoint, OneDrive and kind of uh, things, we can put the controls, we can either allow access, we can limit their access, 
we can challenge the, with the multi-factor likewise. Now for an example, limiting access in the sense, uh, we can integrate with the cloud app security and we can limit the access so where people can proactively, productively access their emails and OneDrive, they can view the data, but they can't download anything not even copy paste the content of the emails likewise. So we can go up to that kind of extent like protecting actual data what they have. And same time based on that we can uh, push the multi-factor authentication to make sure that actually the same person is accessing the data. So when the user is accessing before they access, uh, we do the conditional accessing, conditional uh, access policies. So same time once they access while they are accessing, we can use the Azure identity protection policies and after they access, we can use the all Azure site, uh, all sign in reports to see what they have done, what they have access. So actually we can utilize Microsoft Cloud App Security further for this. Uh, not only the reporting part, but most of the time people having a lot of difficulty of managing the Cloud App uh, uh, Shadow ID. So shadow ID management lifecycle is kind of a continuous thing we have to always do. We have to discover what are the shadow ID application people are using. We have to identify these apps and we have to put the policies. We have to always uh, see the analyze the usage. Then we have to do the continuous monitoring. Then only we can make sure this shadow ID management is happening perfectly in any kind of organization. So uh, we can use the cloud app security so it actually connect with the all the applications in your environment, uh, cloud apps in your environment, we can put the policies. So how we can discover this is actually based on the firewall, like when the use is in your organization, we can uh, integrate with the firewall and proxy with the local collectors. But if the use is not in your organization, like for an example, people are working from home these days. In that case, actually we are, what we can do is we can integrate with the Windows Defender ATP. So Windows Defender ATP agent will continuously push the logs to Microsoft Cloud App Security and we can generate the uh, policy, we can generate the reports and policies, all these things. As I mentioned earlier, based on the session risk, it can identify the session risk, whether its user is connecting from the uh, blacklisted IP, whether it is using any kind of a uh, proxy like Tor, but also kind of a, uh, illegal things or risky applications to access their data. So based on the session risk, we can identify and we can block access of, uh, we can uh, control the session, what they are working on. So with that, I can I will move to the live demo. Uh, for an example, I mentioned earlier, we can put some policies to based on the conditions. Now here, what I'm going to do is, I'm going to connect to my cloud of security, uh, uh, to my email with the username of Megan. This is actually uh, uh, from uh, virtual machine I'm using from Singapore. Uh, so I have put the policies likewise. So when the person is, she is getting connected from the Singapore, she can get connected to her uh, office environment without any issue. But the same user will see. Uh, now I'm going to connect from another uh, from Sri Lanka. So same user I'm using. Uh, when the user is connecting from Sri Lanka. See how this will happen. Uh, that's how I have put the policies. Uh, now, one second. I'm trying to connect from the uh, Sri Lanka. Uh, so it's a separate uh, one. I have to minimize my screen and okay, here we go. So I'm connecting from a uh, new user, same user, uh, but I'm using the same. Again, over here. Uh, now, once we put the password, earlier it allowed me to log in without any issue. But here, when now I'm logging uh, log in from the Sri Lanka, but it's uh, connect, uh, challenging with the multi-factor. So I had to put the code, then only it will uh, allow me to log in. So I'm putting the code like here, uh, 5033. Yes, it will verify and let me. In. So this is the first way. This is how you can uh, manage your uh, login based on the country. So most of the time people are getting a lot of attacks from 
unknown countries from other countries so what we can do we can put policies when the person is logging from sri lanka or when the person is logging from their own office environment they can log in without any issue so we are reducing their frustration but when a, when a user is connecting from another country it's challenging with the multi factor so not only challenging with the multi factor so connecting from another country is actually a risk uh, so what we can do we can control that risk like this way now i'll take another user here i'm going to log out from megan and i'm going to use another username over here with johnny s I'm going to use a different account. Okay, now I'm logging from the journey is now look at this particular session. This is again from Singapore itself since I'm inside the virtual machine. I'm going to my one drive and actually Singapore is my trusted location. That's why I have put the policies like that. So I'm in my one drive. So I'm trying to download one file over here. So it's successfully downloading, but again, we'll look at the link also. It's going, it's the same link like my SharePoint likewise. But when I change it, when I change it like this way, I'm again logging from Sri Lanka with the same different user, the same like Johnny S. with the password can you see over here it's the ui is getting changed it got changed in cloud app security now when i go to again one drive can you see the url there's a small change and you can see it like here access is uh, access to my so one drive business is monitored so this is a monitored session. So this what I have done is when the user is accessing from another country, I have made sure my content is protected so they can again be productive. They can access the data, but they can view it, but they can't download anything. So when he try to download, it will get blocked. Download download is blocked. So likewise, I can make sure my data is connected. My data is protected. So I will, I'm going to use a one more account over here and show you one more thing. So let's connect from another user and experience how it's going to happen. Now I'm going to switch to a different account and I'm using my last account, this one. And when this particular user connected, this is actually more controllable environment. So this is from the uh, we'll go to the email. This is in the Singapore itself. Uh, so we can open the file. We can uh, read the emails. You can see the link. It's the same normal office.com link. So you can simply copy. Copy the data what you have. And paste it over here. So we can do it. But the thing is when a user is connecting from another country, like my earlier example, I'm going to connect from the same user again. And I'm entering the password to log in. So you see again, the UI is getting changed to uh, cloud app security. I'm going to the emails. Now here you are getting it says monitored. 
so we'll see user can see their emails user can uh, actually open the attachments and everything so user can be continuous to be productive but you can as a it people as a person who's author uh, actually authors for the data you can make sure these things are protected so i'm going to copy data action is blocked so not only blocking this action so if if, if someone try to get this kind of a data copied actually you can get an alerts as well uh, so where you will get notified uh, for an example it might be division head or it might be some sort of administrator so we will get an alert by saying this particular user try to copy some uh, kind of copied data here so you will get some alerts so this is how you can protect uh, your copied data and make sure people are productive so how you can uh, can see all these things how you can monitor all these things so you can go to the uh, cloud app security and you can see uh, your alerts and everything so alerts you can categorize uh, who has login from the anonymous ips people who are connected from the infrequent countries suspicious ips ips and mainly like whose credentials has leaked and in some impossible travels activity has happened and who has logged in for many risky IPs. Not only that part, you can go into more details such as from the files activities. Uh, what are the uh, unusual file deletions happened in your environment and any kind of unusual file downloaded by the user or any unusual file happened in the environment. All these things can be monitored. So you can get report who has shared files, who has downloaded uh, like in kind of a bulk downloads, not like just downloading one or two files. So if a person download less than, more than 10, 50 kind of files, you can get alerts. Uh, in that way, you can make sure your data is protected. You can give either permission to download, especially when they are accessing their own laptop, corporate laptop. But when the user, a user is accessing from another device, not his corporate laptop so you can put policies like they can't download as i showed earlier so this is how you can make sure uh, people are more productive and uh, more uh, but still your environment your corporate data is protected in that way you can uh, get monitored and same time you can see what are the apps people have access if you want to integrate So uh, here it shows all the application people have access. For an example, you can see get filtered and see what are the cloud storage people have access. And these are the cloud storage people have access. So you can get some idea score 10 means this green color means those are healthy apps, but uh, the red color means that those are not healthy. So you can see some unhealthy storage also people have access. So when you want to see what are those things, you can simply click on that and you can uh, get more information more inside how many people have access it actively from how many ip addresses and how much of data has uploaded and how much of data has downloaded so all this information is visible with uh, just a click in uh, click so that's the easiest way uh, in this kind of a, uh, by using this kind of method, method application you can make sure people are productive because they can access what they want but still your data, your corporate data is protected, so they can't misuse any kind of this data. Uh, so with that, I think uh, I can hand it over to Kiran to start the uh, next part. Uh, Kiran, over to you. Cool, thanks, Udesh. Uh, that was uh, really good. A lot of uh, capabilities uh, with conditional access in uh, Caspi, right? So let me switch back to my uh, screen, and then I want to show you a couple of demos, and then I'll. Uh, Come back with uh, my presentation. Um, can you all uh, see my uh, my screen? Udesh, can you confirm? Yes, you can proceed. Okay, awesome. So, so this is where I left uh, uh, right uh, during my session. So when I joined to this particular group. Uh, you know, I myself as a user, I joined and then I can now you can actually see that these are the applications which are actually assigned to me, right? 
So as a user, this is a very powerful uh, the tool. Uh, this tool is also called a self-service uh, group management. Just like what you have seen uh, self-service password reset, where you actually can actually reset your own passwords. Similar to this is a group management, self-service group management, where you can actually join to a group and based on the group membership you have, uh, you know, respective applications are given to you and those are already published for you in my apps uh, dot Microsoft portal. So as a as a remote employee, when you log in here, uh, you know, with your username and password, you go to my apps dot Microsoft dot com and when you are logging with your username and password, this is what you get to see. You get to see all these applications already pre configured with single sign on with conditional access with multi factor authentication uh, all at one place. And these, these are not just Microsoft applications. You can actually see that these are all uh, Microsoft plus third party applications as well. Right and with just a click of a button with just uh, joining to a particular group, I have access to more than 20 or 30 applications which you are able to see here. Imagine if you as an IT have to do this and deliver these many applications to each one of the user inside your organization. Uh, you know, uh, think about the amount of effort uh, you need to do uh, in order to configure this, provide access to your users and then you know ask them to log in. Now when I have these published, uh, all I need to do is like, you know, I click on this one of these application called browser stack. When I click on it, uh, because uh, based on my authentication and the uh, single sign on integration, which I've already done using my Azure Active Directory, it actually takes me to the next uh, tab and then it's trying to log in using the account dot Active Directory Windows Azure services. That means it's trying to use my single uh, Active Directory identity and then allowing me to log in here. So this is a third party application and you can actually see that I have successfully able to log in and then access it. So similarly, uh, you can actually based on the group membership, you know, you can actually give more and more applications. Now I have, also have this uh, Salesforce application here. So you know about Salesforce, right? So I click on the Salesforce here and automatically it will also like make sure uh, it is trying to uh, access it like uh, multi-factor authentication. Uh, just now uh, Udesh has demonstrated Salesforce is a very critical application and then I want to make sure there is always a two-factor authentication for me when I access a critical application. So using the conditional access, uh, you can actually ensure if a user is coming in uh, from a trusted device, which is Azure already joined, uh, you know, the device is trusted. Uh, there is no MFA asked, but if the same user is coming uh, from a non trusted uh, device like you know he's using his home PC or his mobile uh, computer, then when he is trying to access it, uh, he is being challenged with multi factor authentication and uh, if he's a right user, he will be able to uh, access it. So this way you can actually protect the uh, employees. So this is again another policy I wanted to show you that when you are logging in from a non trusted uh, IP or non trusted device, um, there is the risk factor that you know this is the first time I'm trying to log into this particular application and it challenged me with multi factor authentication and uh, now I was able to pass the multi factor authentication. Now it is actually trying to ch you know challenge me that reconfirm your password. If you know your password, you will be able to reconfirm and then enter your critical uh, business application called Salesforce. If you are a hacker, you didn't know the password for some reason. Somehow you were able to pass the first thing. Uh, still, you won't be able to log in because you cannot re-enter or you cannot confirm the password, right? So that's how uh, it basically works. So if I uh, reconfirm my password, then I will be able to uh, you know, uh, log into this particular application. Now let me show you uh, the uh, business to business application. Uh, you know, we have Azure AD B2B uh, business to business, right? So when you go to portal.azure.com and then when you uh, go to uh, groups and within the groups, you can actually see these are the groups you have in your organization. Now I go to this particular group called uh, bug, uh, bashers which I've just joined uh, using my identity right now here. 
you can actually see all the members who are uh, part of this particular group. Uh, as you know, I've actually joined using Kiran. And what I've done is here, I've also added my Microsoft ID. So what I'm looking at right now is my different tenant, which is M365 x uh, 574853.contoso.com uh, but i'm trying to demonstrate the business to business how you can invite your partners your third party vendors to access your uh, applications and securely right so what i've done is i've just added here had members and then you can add gmail id msn id outlook id or uh, any business uh, domain id so I have added uh, here when I went here, I just typed uh, Kiran in R uh, at Microsoft.com and you can actually see that, you know, that ID is uh, got added here. So you can actually see it's added here. I just added and then select. Uh, that's it. So the moment I add them here successfully, uh, you know, in my Microsoft email uh, uh, account, right, I got this particular email uh, telling that, you know, administrator uh, from this particular tenant is actually inviting you to access the applications. OK, do you want to accept the invitation right now? I can actually accept an invitation, so I'll just keep a browser open and uh, now I say I accept this invitation, right? So when I do this, it will automatically take me to this particular uh, account, which is uh you know uh my tenant account and you can actually see because i was part of that particular application uh, group i was able to access all these applications okay even though i'm not part of your organization and when i click on this browser stack application uh it will actually go to uh this application and then it will use my um active directory account which you have added in your uh, you know portal and with that, you can actually see Kiran in our Microsoft.com, uh, which is an external ID logged in to, uh, you know, my tenant uh, using the my tenant single sign on ID, and then I was able to access it. So with this, as uh, Udesh uh, was showing, you can actually challenge him with multi-factor authentication. You can actually block him from copying and pasting any of the data or even downloading any uh, files in case if you really want to block it. OK, because it's not part of your organization. You want to just have him access to the application and then do some updates online only, right? So you won't be able to copy and paste. You won't be able to download any of the data. So if you really want to restrict conditional access is the right uh, solution for you to do that. OK, now with that, let me come back to my uh, slide. And uh, this is where uh, you need to ensure uh, you know your remote workers are being productive while their corporate resources are protected right so when you say you have a remote worker today all your employees are remote workers right because of this covid uh, crisis situation now they might access using an endpoint or they might access your corporate uh, applications using a mobile device now it's a job of you as an organization to make sure they are protected uh, while they are collaborating internally and externally, and their uh, data is also protected uh, in the in the cloud applications, as well as uh, you know they are protected from phishing and malware attacks. Right now, um, we have this uh, beautiful uh, solution, uh, you know, which can actually uh, block sensitive messages in your Teams chat as well. So we have a Teams DLP uh, solution where once you enable those policies, if somebody is trying to send a credit card information or any other sensitive information on a chat, uh, you can actually see that this message was blocked, right? So that way you can actually make sure like, you know, the sensitive or confidential information is not being sent on a public chat uh, windows as well. So you can actually block them. Uh, with a uh, simple policy uh, enablement. And then you can also use unified labeling. Uh, so we have this uh, Microsoft information protection solution where you can actually label every single file and every single email. And these uh, labels have a protection and they actually travel no matter where the file is located, whether is it in your inbox, whether is it in your on-premises environment, in your USB, or you sent it to somebody else. Uh, only authorized 
people will be able to open uh, and access your data. So I, we would also recommend you to start using Unified Labeling. So in case if you want to know more information about how you can do this, uh, please get in touch with me or uh, with Zillion team and we'll be more than happy to uh, take you through. Then we also have, um, how do you ensure that we have seen a, a drastic, uh, sorry, we have seen a lot of uh, attacks uh, over the period of this one or two months on uh, COVID-19 as a theme. Uh, hackers are using this uh, as an opportunity to compromise and then send more and more phishing and malware attacks to your organization's users. Right now, how do you make sure you protect the COVID uh, related attacks in your SharePoint, in your OneDrive, in your Teams, in your other Office applications, in your cloud applications, right? You need a solution for that. So we have Office 365 ATP, which can actually help you though with that. And with an endpoints, we also have solutions like a Defender ATP, which can actually help uh, your uh, endpoints like you know Windows 10, Mac. Today we have announced uh, that we also support Linux. And in the next three or four months, we will have a Defender ATP solution running on iOS and Android uh, environment as well. So that means uh, we have covered almost all platforms. And uh, with Defender ATP, we have uh, you know threat and vulnerability management, which will actually continuously monitor uh, on a real time basis to discover all the threats which are uh, happening in your device. Uh, we have attack surface reduction based on the rules you have set. You know, you can do system hardening and you can make sure that, you know, the, the threats are not impacting or writing anything onto your memory or to your DLL files, to your services and so on. And then we have automated investigation and remediation uh, uh, where, uh, you know, when the threat is detected, uh, your IT team don't need to do an investigation. Automatically, Defender ATP will do an investigation and then it will try to delete all the threats uh, on the endpoints, on end users endpoints. So it's a perfect solution for you. When you are, when users are not coming inside a network and you as an IT don't have an access to your endpoint devices, you know, you need somebody who actually works 24 by 7 in order to detect threats and remediate it, right? So you need solutions like Defender ATP automated investigation and remediation kind of solutions. Now, uh, just to help you out, uh, we, we talked about a lot of solutions and we know it's not possible for any organization overnight to implement all this stuff. So there are some guidelines given on how you can start uh, face by face. So when we talk about enabling access to your uh, secure uh, productive applications, you know, you need to one thing you need to connect your on premises infrastructure to cloud. You need to integrate on premises uh, Active Directory to Azure Active Directory and then enable single sign on. Once you are in that phase, you can start creating the next layers like MFA, conditional access, CASB, uh, you know, Azure B2B and all those stuff. So that is where the second phase comes in, where you start protecting uh, the applications uh, securely. Then the phase three is where you start allowing your vendors, partners to start collaborating with your um, employees and applications. When it comes to managing devices, you have to enable BYOD, bring your own device, and then you have to provision applications securely on those new devices, right? So you have to start having BYOD uh, kind of solution. So with Microsoft, we have uh, Intune, we have SCCM, and now we have changed, uh, we brought a new solution called Microsoft Endpoint Manager. So with that, you can actually enable BYOD scenario, as well as you can actually enforce access policies on unmanaged devices. And you can also use virtual desktop kind of a, a solution. To protect your resources, uh, you should start turning on DLP policies on Teams. You should start, uh, you know, enabling safe links, safe attachments in your Office 365 environment. In phase two, you can actually start deploying more advanced solutions like uh, Defender ATP. And then in phase three, you can talk up, you can look into any uh, integrating uh, MCAS, uh, conditional access, Office 365 ATP, different area ATP, everything together. So this how you can actually start protecting a lot of things you as an IT to have to do in order to protect your uh, remote end uh, users. Uh, in order to make sure we have a secure remote uh, workforce, right? So with that, let me end uh, my sessions. If you have any questions, please use your Q&A channel. I now pass on the uh, my session back to Sujan uh, to do the closing notes. Sujan, it's over to you. 
thank you, Kiran. Hello again, everyone. Uh, hope you enjoyed and learned a lot of information about securing your remote working practices from both Udesh and uh, Kiran. We will be open for Q&A for the next five to ten minutes. If you have any questions, please type them in the Q&A box and we will get to answering them. Uh, so John, I think uh, most of the questions uh, they have asked, we have already uh, answered. Uh, so if there is any other questions, yes, we can answer it. Great, I can see that. So uh, I would like to take one question uh, in here for everyone to just explain a little bit further. For self-service password, do we set what type of license needed? Uh, so actually, uh, for the self-service password, do we set it's available in the uh, as a fee of study, even mature AD free uh, version. But the thing is, like if you have uh, done uh, like Azure AD Connect, where you have to uh, not change the password on the cloud, but where you have to write it down to your uh, on-prem environment. Then you will need to have the pa uh, password write back capability that will be coming with the uh, like AD premium uh, plan one license. Uh, Kiran, uh, is there anything else you want to add there? Uh, no, this I think you have covered it. Udesh, there is uh, one more question on the SSP reset. Ask just now, will you just take a look? Uh, yeah, uh, Kiran? Yeah. Uh, one question uh, like regarding the SSP self service password reset. Uh, mm -hmm. Anyway, we, are, we can limit secondary email address and only allow mobile corporate yes. account. Yes, yes. You need to uh, create a separate group, and then for that group, you need to assign uh, what is the uh, method you want to test them. Yeah, so we can like uh, block, uh, put in the uh, Personal email has a secondary one, and we can put only the mobile, right? Yep, yep, we can do that. Yeah, I read the question. Yes, the Manjula, you're right. So we can limit the secondary email uh, address uh, and allow only mobile. If you really want to do that, yes. I mean, I showed you in my password policy uh, settings, right? So you just go to the portal and then it's a go to password reset. There you have options of choosing what is the best method for uh, self-service password reset. So there you don't need to check box uh, for uh, email. OK, so just limit to mobile and that that will allow users only to use mobile uh, as a password reset mechanism. There is a question in MFA. Can we use uh, two mobile numbers? No, it's only one mobile number. 
Um, so the, that is you as a user, you have to register it. Um, so uh, when you when a policy has been enabled uh, for all users for MFA, there is a registration process. So the first time when you are trying to log in, you have to enable what is the mobile number uh, you want to configure it or register. So it's only one mobile number for you uh, to register with MFA. Uh, there's a one more question uh, like uh, just to confirm business essential license user cannot self service their passwords, right? Actually, uh, it's like this. If uh, I can't say yes or no, because the reason is uh, self service password reset is uh, available in Azure AD PMM as well, but uh, bis uh, business essential, so essential also that is available. The thing is, if you have enable Azure AD uh, Connect, like you are syncing all of your on prem users to cloud, in that environment, you have to write back the password. That write back feature is, uh, is not available in Azure, uh, in Business Essential. So that, that, is, that is why you need to have the AD Premium Plan 1. Uh, like if you are only cloud users, in that case, yes, uh, you can do the uh, password, uh, self service password reset. I think there's one more question on uh, if there will be a recording of this available uh, and yes, we will be uploading this to YouTube and uh, sending you a link uh, within the within the day. Yeah, there is a question for changing the mobile number. Can you do that later? Yes, uh, absolutely. Uh, they can do it. No, no challenge with that, but then you don't have an option to change by yourself. You have to contact your IT team and then ask them to uh, put the mobile number in your profile, in your Azure Active Directory profile, the new phone number. So there, there is one more question on uh, how do you assist for a third party on premise ERP and if IS is not be enabled yet. Uh, Udesh, is that what you answered just now or is it a different question? Oh, no, this is a different question, Ken. Ah, OK, OK. So how do you assist for a third party on prem uh, ERP? So these are uh, we call it as the legacy applications, so we need to check whether uh, these third party on premise ERP solutions are capable of uh, integrating with Azure Active Directory. So uh, it's it's like somebody has to really work on it and then see if there are uh, uh, capability because we use something called as modern authentication in Azure Active Directory. And so most of these legacy applications are not familiar uh, with modern authentication concepts. Uh, so somebody, some developer has to see whether this application can be recode it or integrate an SDK in order to make sure like you know they understand the modern authentication and can we integrate that with Azure AD. If that can be done, then yes, uh, you know you can have a single sign on for your uh, you know on premises ERP solutions as well. If that cannot be done, then you have to upgrade the ERP solution. That's the only option. OK, I think uh, those seem to be all the questions for now. So thank you everyone for joining us uh, in the morning today. And uh, we will uh, we will be publishing a recording of this session online on YouTube and we will be sending you the link. In the meantime, if you if you have any further question, please uh, reach out to one of our account managers or any of us on this call here and we will be able to assist you. I have also shared a link uh, on the chat window if you want to get started on Microsoft Teams with us. And I think that should be all for today. Thank you very much. There is one last question on uh, password reset, uh, the portal. Can yes. we enable this for E1, E3 and on-premises users? Yes, yes, we can do that today, yeah. 
the answer is yes for that. OK, great. Kiran, do you have anything uh, else to say before we end the live session? No, Sujan. Uh, thanks for giving me this opportunity. I hope the session was uh, helpful, useful. I know we covered a lot of topics, uh, but then uh, uh, we know that we didn't justify by giving you a lot of details or going going in detail. But the idea of this session was to tell you like what are the options you have from Microsoft? What kind of solutions you can use in order to make sure your users are protected when they are working uh, remotely from home, right? So I, I see a lot of questions are coming in from SSPR, uh, from MFA conditional access. So uh, please reach out to Zillion team and uh, they can actually take you deep dive. They can go in detail and then they, they can talk about licensing. They can talk about technical requirements. How do we enable these policies and so on? Uh, so that's the only way, the best way for you to immediately start looking at this. OK, so that's it from me. Thank you so much for this opportunity. Great. Thank you very much, Kiran and uh, Udesh, too, for presenting today. Hope we see everyone who joined today at our next webinar, too. Thank you all. Have a good day and stay safe. Thank you.